become a patron at www.patreon.com forward slash golden era bookworm for hard to find books, scans of rare photos and articles on the golden era of bodybuilding. Hi everybody, Golden Era Bookworm here. Today I'd like to talk about how to specialize in the two arms press and the information given today is based on an article recently read by the great author from the Silver Era, David Willoughby. Now I think it's very important in a bodybuilder's progression if they are actually trying to gain more muscular size and strength after for example having achieved a respectable amount of muscle and strength especially by performing 20 rep squats or 20 rep deadlifts um, eventually they want to specialize in the upper body and strength needs to be focused there after for example performing the 20 rep squat or 20 rep deadlift the bodybuilding question would have obviously gained some fantastic fundamental strength in their legs and lower back as well as muscle and now to balance with the upper body one needs to specialize therefore in the upper body and although bench pressing and rowing will obviously uh, achieve a great amount of muscular size and strength in the upper body one needs to directly uh, target the shoulder girdle and of course it is pressing that will strengthen the shoulder girdle and improve the musculature in the area and it will lead to a further increase in strength especially in all the muscles associated with the shoulder girdle and in pressing such as the triceps and um, for example this will obviously lead to a, a greater uh, size of the arms and the shoulder muscles it is obvious because the pressing action actually does involve these uh, the, the, the joints of the elbow and the shoulder now the two hands press was originally one of the three Olympic lifts and it was later removed due to the difficulty in judging this particular event due to the different uh, types of uh, styles of lifting However, the ability to perform the two arms press, although is largely dependent on your bone length, uh, especially the ratio between your upper and lower arm bones and uh, the anatomical arrangement of the tendons, one can still find ways of specializing on the two arms press to um, increase your poundages in the lift itself and to increase the strength. And it is these silver era methods that I will be exploring today and outlining for you. Now the first and most important thing when specializing in any lift is to specialize in that lift itself. So the author recommends press, press, press. That is right, perform the two arms press over and over again. And here it is shown by um, the model here, Abe Goldberg, who is um, cleaning the weight off the floor, as you can see in step one up to step two, he's, he's cleaned the weight up to his shoulders and he presses the weight by keeping his back fairly straight. That is the uh, method of performing the Olympic two hands press. Now, one of the ways to um, add a specialization program to your routine, especially if you've, you've been a novice for you know six to 12 months doing a three day a week full body routine, you've gained enough strength now, enough bulk, um, of course is now to increase the frequency of your training to five days a week where you can now start um, uh, adding, adding, for example, more sessions on the press itself or later on accessory exercises that I will um, outline for you. Now, in specializing in the press itself, uh, the author recommends as many Olympic weightlifting coaches back in the day, um, a short sets of, of uh, low reps, but many sets of these um, particular uh, rep ranges so for example if you're going to be performing the press you want to be focusing on gaining strength and therefore a low rep range is recommended of only three reps per set but again you want to inc you want to um, have a uh, an increase in the sets that you are using and use only eight to twelve sets and of course in this case the amount of sets that you actually do depends on how many other accessory exercises will be at at the end of your workout so after your actual pressing has, has finished um, and also it depends on how much volume you want to use and how much uh, your frequency of training in the week this is all dependent on the trainee itself so at least eight sets but up to 12 sets if you're only specializing for example on the Olympic press itself during that day um, the poundage should be anywhere between 75 to 80 percent of your one rep max 
Alternatively, you can choose to increase the weight with um, as, as your sets progress during the workout, or if you really want to tax yourself, you can start with a weight close to your one rep max and decrease the weight with increasing sets. Uh, finally, because you are working on strength, it is recommended that you have ample rest, that is three to five minutes of rest per set. Remember, you are going uh, to increase strength in these particular workouts, so it's important to rest and, and come to each set full uh, with power and, and energy. So very important to have a long period of rest. So now I'd like to um, talk about the accessory exercises that are recommended as well by the author, some of which I find very, very, very interesting. Now, a very interesting recommendation given by the author is to perform the handstand push-up, which obviously is going to work your hands, your hand strength and your wrist strength, and basically your, your tendons and joints of all your upper body. It is a, an excellent exercise, and in doing so, you're going to gain a lot of strength in your joints, which are really going to uh, translate to greater strength in the two arms press. Of course, you're going to be stabilizing with the muscle groups such as the deltoids, triceps, trapezius, and serratus. And um, I guess performing this after the two arms press is not going to be as taxing as you think because you are actually not using your limit poundages here. You are just using your body weight. And it's an excellent um, follow-up exercise, I guess, to the two hands press because you are mainly um, performing, you know, handstand push-ups for as many reps as possible for just a few sets uh, using a much lighter weight which is your own body weight. What will get taxed though is once again the tendon and joint strength. An excellent recommendation given by the author, the handstand push-up. Now the dumbbell incline bench press was regularly used by many silver era athletes um, to improve the Olympic two hands press at the time. And uh, I think it's still a very valid way of improving your uh, your two hands press overall because you are using uh, the anterior deltoid muscle. Now what's interesting about the recommendations here of the author is how the incline bench press should be used over the weeks. He recommends starting off with a 45 degree angle set up on the incline bench press and uh, do the dumbbell bench press uh, using such a setup. But over the weeks he recommends increasing the angle uh, slowly, so by 5 to 10 degrees each week, until at the end of your program, the, the lifter basically is lifting erect. So you've got now the bench completely upright at 90 degrees, and the lifter is pressing uh, in an erect position. And what this does is the gradual inclining of the bench changes the leverage on the anterior deltoid muscle. So not only is it worked differently throughout the weeks, but the muscle is uh, worked increasingly harder over the weeks, uh, more so than just, for example, doing bench presses and or standing press. So a very interesting, again, recommendation here, um, using the dumbbell incline bench press, increasing the angle over the weeks. Now, finally, the author recommends to truly increase the activation of your stabilization muscles further, for example, further than the uh, handstand push-up. You can sit on the floor with your feet out and this makes the pressing and, and you basically press from this position you press off the floor with your feet out sitting on the floor with your feet out and this makes the press extremely hard because you no longer have your feet and your legs uh, to, to stabilize you and so the stabilization the activation the activation of your stabilization muscles of your core are extremely taxed and um, by, by sitting on the floor straight-legged and um, you basically can start off by performing uh, the two arm press with a barbell. And to increase the difficulty further over the weeks, you can switch to dumbbells, which will also require further stabil stabilization of the weight because now you are dealing instead of with a barbell, which um, already offers some stability, two separate free weights in each hand, which of course are gonna require the stabilization of your, of your um upper body muscles as well. And so this makes the um, the press off the floor even more difficult as shown here by Abe Goldberg who's actually doing the exercise as, as uh, recommended with the feet out sitting on the floor and pressing with the dumbbells. Much, much harder version of the press which should of course translate to um, an increase in strength in the two arms press whilst standing. 
Now the author does state that um, other exercises could be used, such as straight arm exercises and uh, you know muscle holdouts where you hold the weight out in front of you or to the side. All of course do translate to improved deltoid muscular development. Um, however, because these exercises do not mimic the movement of pressing, the triceps are not affected. And therefore, these exercises don't necessarily uh, offer too much to the presser itself. At the end, what you'd need to do is to press, 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 and do exercises that basically make the press much harder, as outlined in the accessory movements. Uh, I really enjoyed reading this article by David Willoughby. I thought the information given within uh, was very applicable to um, to people that want to improve their two hands press. So I really do hope you've enjoyed watching this video and that you can gain inspiration here from the great John Davis, one of the greatest heavyweight presses or, uh, and Olympic athletes of all time. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed watching the video. Uh, if you have, please give it a, th a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't to the Golden Era Book Own. Thank you for watching and leave me your comments. If you'd like to support my work, you can donate via PayPal or become a patron on www.patreon.com forward slash golden era bookworm. And if you like, you can also purchase silver, bronze and golden era books and courses from my website www.goldenerabookworm.com. Hope you've enjoyed watching the video. This is the Golden Era Bookworm. Bye for now. If you'd like to learn more about Silver Era bodybuilding methods, I have some books online, Strength and Bulk Training for Weightlifters and Bodybuilders and How to Build Bigger Arms, both books by Reg Park, available on www.goldenerabookworm.com. Hi everybody, I just want to recommend this phenomenal book, Vince's Secret Locker, volume number two by Carl Coyne. I've been looking at this for about four weeks and I can't put it down. If you get a chance, check it out. He also has a part one that I, I highly recommend also. Uh, Vince was the trainer of the stars and had an amazing, interesting gym that today there's still not equipment like, uh, like it around. It was all made out of wood. Uh, he'll be on our radio show coming up probably in the next couple weeks or so. Have a great day and again, highly recommend this book.